We started this out by showing a film originally in the World Performance Hall, and I don't know how many, has everybody seen that? So we've arranged today that we will um, have a session here that follows up from the last open space we had, and those people had seen the movie. And then the um, room upstairs is for the people that have not been, have not seen the movie. And uh, you will still get to participate in an open space right after the movie, but it's it's set up in such a way that the uh, those who have, were here before uh, can carry on their their discussion um, from the last meeting, if that makes sense to people. Okay. <laughs> Oliver is uh, going to help <coughs> facilitate the meeting tonight and to uh, to keep us on track. So um, we're. Going to be bouncing back and forth a bit, I think, on, on what we do. My name's Marianne. There's a few things that, uh, the one thing I want to bring to your attention down at the bottom of our rules of engagement here, and Oliver will take you through those in a minute. But the uh, public meeting is, it is a public meeting and it is being videotaped, so just so that you know that, um, in case that's a concern to anybody. Um, so, Transition Town itself um, is. Obviously, it's a philosophy, it's a movement, it's something that we engaged in um, as part of an organized, um, organized movement in England. They uh, saw that there was a real need around addressing the climate change and addressing peak oil. With those two parameters, they realized that one of the things they had to do was really reskill and and um, get back to the basics of survival in each community, rather than uh, relying on being fed globally, um, all of their goods coming from the global market instead of from the local market. So with that, uh, Transition Towns was born in England. And uh, Oliver and another one of our initiating committee members, uh, Greg, went to the original training that was in, uh, where was that one? In Clinton. In Clinton. And there's another one coming up in Guelph uh, in the middle of May. But um, they went to that original training and learned the basics, and, and actually far more than the basics, I think, to, uh, to get us started and to really start the group here in London. So they're the ones that actually have the skills of doing this, and I'm just kind of tagging along. Um, it's a very much a grassroots organization. It's, uh, it's not meant to have a lot of structure around it in the sense of, uh, you know, we're going to stand up here and tell you what it's all about, or well, how to do it. We are just going to try and give you an, a flavor, and then you figure out what, you, what needs to be done in London. Each city is different. Each community is different, and it really is about developing community. It's about working together. It's about creating um, a space where people feel safe, feel cared for, and have um, the ability to offer their skills and to, to use their skills for the better of everybody for the common good. It's an all-volunteer organization, and it's, it's meant to um, engage you with each other. It's not about us kind of uh, telling you what to do, but it's to engage you with each other and find your level of comfort of what you want to be involved in. It's around answering some questions, the broader questions, and then discussing those. So, Oliver, you want to add three? Um, yeah, I would want to add um, something to that. I mean, it's tempting two people disappear off onto a training course for a weekend and come back as if they know everything that needs to be done. We don't know. There are two people that disappeared off, Greg Brock and myself. We come back, we're busy identifying and have to be trying to identify with people whether there is a shared concern in relation to issues of peak oil and climate change and whether there's a, a shared want to build resilience within a local community to deal with those types of issues. Um, so primarily it's about identifying common ground and what it is we can do about these things. As part of that process, when we came back, we uh, approached um, a whole bunch of, of, of both, uh, for a better term, stakeholder groups in the community, from the environmental community, post-carbon London, etc., to say, well, guys, look, 
is this uh, an issue that we're, that we're all wanting to fight in on? And had a lot of a good, positive uh, um, response from that. And, and from these things, it's, it's formed something called an initiating committee. And the initiating committee at the moment consists of the bodies of Mary Ann, myself, Chantry, Lorena, uh, Michelle, there are a group of us, Toband. Um, and we come together once a month for the, for the purposes of trying to, trying to sort of help build um, an organization. Um, and the key element that's really sold me on this idea is the, is the idea of built-in obsolescence. And basically that means the faces that you see up here and around the table should not be ideally the same faces that you see in a year's time. Because if we've managed to collectively really pursue this idea and take it on and personally own it, then if working groups start to grow and become established, working groups that are fa founded basically by the, the, your identification of need within the community and want to do something about it, then representatives from those working groups come forward take on the, uh, 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 from, it wouldn't be an initiating committee anymore, we'd be stepping back to hand over something for the community to take on, own, and run with. Um, so that's basically where, what we're trying to do. This is, it takes a long time, it's taken a long time for the people that have sat on an initiating committee to get used to one another, and to work with one another, and deal with one another. Relationships are, I've heard it said, probably the most difficult thing you'll ever have to engage with and deal with, and community, building and having an understanding of the sense of what community is about and a belonging to it um, is, again, um, can be difficult at times, but very rewarding too at the end of it. Um, so that's all the timeline that, that the initiative committee has been played around with. We've been dealing with putting together some semblance of a constitution um, at the moment. And we are hoping that we're going to be in a if growth happens in the manner that we're hoping it will, then by March the 1st next year, hopefully that should be the first annual general meeting of a Transition Town London body. We've already been, uh, had the recognition from the United Kingdom to say, yes, we recognise the people around that initiative committee are willing to make the effort in that direction. That's all that's been recognised. We're permitted to put a little bug on things to say this is a Transition London Ontario, you know, uh, um, uh, affiliated or, or, or event and what have you, so we can put something out there in that regard. Um, but what else is to happen in terms of activity and action is entirely down to us. Um, and as Marianne mentioned, we went through an open space um, um, the last time where these were the issues that were identified in areas of concern. The longest list of these was food. So that informed the the, uh, the want to have a a uh, an open space further discussion to deal with food issues and food security issues. Um, so those were the results of the, the, of the brainstorming from uh, last time. You've got anything to add? No, that's you will see this. Um, we've got packages for you as we break into groups to talk about the the two questions of how do we localize our food supply. Uh, so we can become more resilient and self-sufficient, and how do, uh, how do we know what to do to make the localization a reality? We have packages for you to take with you. Maureen has a package upstairs for the group that is going to see the film. So um, at this point, I think I'll just request that, Michelle, you can, you can take the new uh, people with you, and uh, hopefully they'll enjoy the film and get a lot out of it, and discuss those questions. Uh, Maureen's prepared to uh, facilitate that upstairs. One of the benefits of seeing the film and then having the discussion is that you you are discussing it from the point of view of the people that started the transition movement. Mm -hmm. And you get the same flavor as those of us that have seen it before, and have seen it as well. So. We had a, a very good turnout the first time uh, that it was shown here, and the, it seems to me that there is a thirst out there to do something, but this is a, this is a marathon, and it's not a sprint. And um, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's going to it's gonna, it's gonna take time. You can't rush the relationships in that regard. So, yeah. Okay, so those who want to go with uh, to see the film, please uh, now's your chance to uh, to go with Michelle.